What's up everybody? In this tutorial, you are going to learn how to do multi-threaded Python programming. You don't need any previous exposure to multi-threaded programming in any language. You just need to know a little bit about Python and be able to follow along. Why is this important? This is important if you're a researcher using a very limited data set. You can use data augmentation to take that limited data set and make it into something suitable for training a deep learning model. In this example, we're going to be doing some image pre-processing where we're going to start with a very limited set of images, just stuff I took pictures of to sell on eBay, and we're going to do image rotations to turn them into a larger data set that we could use for some you know, hypothetical computer vision project. Let's get started. So let's start with our imports. We need the Python image library. We need NumPy to handle resizing. We need glob to handle the file operations. And we will be using Keras to do the multi uh, the pre-processing. Preprocessing.image import image data generator. Multiprocessing.dummy import pool as thread pool. And this is the class that will help us to do the multi-threaded processing. And you really want to pay attention to this because it's not as straightforward as you may think. In fact, the presence of any any inter for loops will actually screw up the whole thing and prevent it from working properly. So we're going to start by taking a look at the data set I want to manipulate. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to do the actual multi-threaded processing. So we're going to start by taking a look at the data set I want to play with, and then we're going to talk about the naive way of doing this with for loops so you can get an idea for just exactly how slow it is if you do it the way with for loops. And then you can really appreciate how much of a speed up you get using the multi-threaded Python approach. So let's take a look at the data really quick. So this is just some stuff I was selling on eBay. This is an old all-in-one water cooler, a tablet, a Galileo set, you know, a, a camera, video card, bag and apron for welding. So a bunch of random stuff I was selling on eBay. And uh, we're going to turn these images, eight of them, into, let's say, 80. And we're going to time how long that takes using the traditional for loop approach and then the multi-threaded approach so you can see the speed up. So let's go ahead and write our function to augment the images. What this is going to do is it's going to take a list of images, open them up, resize them, and rotate them by a random angle, and then save them to a different directory. So it'll take inputs of the raw images themselves, and the files, and the list of files so we can do some renaming, and the multi factor which tells you how many multiples of each image you want. Gen is an image data generator from Keras. This is what we're using to do the actual pre-processing. It's not important for multi-threading itself, it's just something we need for the example. So what we're going to do is loop over all of the images, and then for each of them we're going to do whatever number of um, multiplications. So this is all specific to where I have the data saved. Don't pay too much attention to this, it's not critical. Uh, in particular the splitting and indexing here is going to be different on your machine. I've saved the data two directories up in a couple of subdirectories, so don't worry about that. So we're going to dump the data into a directory called augmented images with the name given by the original source file name. We're going to split it off and find the part that appears before the .jpg. And we're going to add on an underscore and the string of the multiplier. So that way we'll have file name underscore zero, underscore one, etc. So next we need our random theta transformation. And that will be a random number in the range of 0 to 270 degrees. So now we call our image data generator object on the image and pass it a dictionary of the transformations we want it to do. The key is theta, meaning it wants to rotate by some angle, which is theta fx. Let's go ahead and split this onto a new line. Now we want to convert that object into an 
image. And we're going to want to resize it. These were taken with a smartphone, so they're like 16 megapixels or something. Let's reduce them down to one megapixel. So this will uh, resize the image and it will perform anti-aliasing. It'll get rid of the jagged edges. And then we want to save. And just to save memory, we want to set everything to none. So zero out the memory used by the transformed raw image and the new image. So now let's go to our main function. and start writing up the the uh, main calls. So raw images dir equals so again this will be particular to my system you can when you pull this from my github just make sure to change this and you will need to play around with the splits and the indexing to get the file names right. So the image files equals a sorted glob.glob .glob raw images dir plus star.jpg recursive equals true. So what this will do is it will traverse the directory structure and pick out everything that has a star.jpg and sort it and stick it into this list. So now let's make an image list. Good grief, I hate autocomplete. I should just turn that off. For file in raw image files, we want to append to the image list numpy array image dot open file. And then we want to call augment images image list raw image files malt factor equals 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with eight images and we're going to end up with 80. So this is a pretty decent number of operations to do. So let's go to the command line and run the uh, run the process and see how long it takes. So as usual, let's see how many mistakes I made. Invalid syntax. Why am I not surprised? Uh, that's because I forgot an underscore. Module glob has no attribute sglob. That is a typo. Error name multi is not defined. Stir multi. Ah, that's because I called it malt in the for loop. There we go. Name theta fx is not defined. That is also because it is theta tfx, of course. Okay, so let's go ahead and time that. And uh, this will tell us how long it's going to run. I didn't put in any print statements, so I have no way of knowing how far along it is. But I'm going to go ahead and wait for that to finish and pause here. Oh, while that's running, let's uh, take a look at the um, system monitor so you can get an idea of the performance see what's going on. So looking at the system monitor, you can see that it is pretty much single threaded. So it is maxing out a single thread at a time. And then, of course, the OS is bouncing between threads, doing whatever it needs to do. And there's some other over, uh, overhead running around here. You can see that there is some load on the other cores, but one of them is always essentially maxed out, and that's the one doing the actual image augmentations. And you may be able to hear my um, cooler speeding uh, spooling up now. It's getting kind of warm. Uh, we can even see the temperatures in here. You can see that I'm hitting 72C, which is nice and toasty. Uh, on a single core. The others are a more reasonable 43C. Not too bad. Okay, so I'll let that run for a minute and I will report back to you when it's done. Another neat thing is you can actually see it uh, writing the data to the images to the directory as it goes along. And you can see it's basically plopping down one at a time. So it's got 63 files. We've got uh, 16 more to go. One minute. Okay, so that finished in 2 minutes and 26 seconds. Not too bad. You know, we took 8 images and we turned them into 80. Let's go ahead and take a look at them just so we can visualize the result. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a look at them so we can uh, visualize the results. 
So you can see here that we have uh, basically taken one image and rotated a bunch of times by a random angle. Uh, and we've done that for each of the original images. So this is really useful for, you know, uh, image uh, computer vision projects where you don't have a whole lot of data and you want to turn a small data set into a big one. So now let's go back to the code editor and do the multi-threaded implementation to see how much of a speed up we get. So here we are back in the code editor. So I want to go ahead and work backwards this time and show you guys how you start in the main function uh, calling a threaded uh, operation. So you want to start with pool equals thread pool. This will open up your pool of threads, so to speak. And the next thing you want to do is you want to start iterating over your multi-factor. So we'll just hard code it as 10 this time. And we'll just say starting iteration i. Now you want to pass it uh, a list of files and you want to pass it the function you want to execute and then you want to map the two together. So that's what we're going to do. So indices equals i for x in range len raw image files and you want to do pool.map. We want to map something which is the threaded augment images function that we're going to write if we can type and we want to zip up the raw image files and the indices. And what this will do is it will map this input to this function and spread it out across all of the threads that we dictate. Now you can put in a number here. If you only have, say, six threads, maybe you have a six, uh, six core Intel processor without hyperthreading, you could put a six there. If you leave it blank, it's going to automatically take up as many cores as it can. You may have noticed I have an eight core, 16 thread CPU, so it's going to max out all 16 threads, uh, or maybe only eight because I only have eight images. We'll see. Uh, but it's going to max out the most threads is, that it can uh, to give you the best possible results. And then when you're done with the mapping, you want to let the uh, pool know that you're done with the parallelization part uh, by calling pool.close. And then you want to do something called pool.join, which will allow the uh, process to wait for all of the threads to close before you know going down and executing more code down here. Um, this is important because sometimes you'll get exceptions and errors in here that may not report to the terminal uh, unless you call this pool.join. So this is an important housekeeping set of functions that you pretty much always want to call. And I think they're kind of unfortunately named, but it is what it is. So uh, just to reiterate, we're going to zip up the image files and indices and pass them as input to this threaded augment images function, which we're going to write presently. So let's go ahead and write our threaded augment images function. And we're passing in the zipped object image files that we're going to unpack now. And then we need our image data generator again. Because we want to do the same operations, we're going to use a NumPy array from the file that we are passing in. So raw image files. So this is just, if you recall, a list of files. We're not passing in the actual images. We're handling the opening of the files here. So now we need our transform again. Data transform equals NumPy random choice range to 70. It'll do the same thing. We need the transformed raw image gen apply transform image theta that's a dictionary and the key is theta tfx close parenthesis next we need to do a new image equals image from array transformed raw image rgb and then we need to resize it into 1024 by 1024 and anti-alias it. And then we're going to need the same, basically the same file name as before. So I will just copy that, I believe. I will. 
So I will copy this. So let's go ahead and indent this properly. And it's not files, it's raw image files. It's not IDX and it's not multi, it is IDX. So that should be okay. Famous last words. And then of course at the end you want to do the same thing. Uh, setting the images to none. To save on memory. So, so let's head to the terminal and test it out. All right, let's see what it does. So there it goes. Let's take a look at the um, the process monitor and see what it's doing. So looking at the system monitor, you can see that it is loading up all the threads intermittently as it's passing around operations. Um, and you can probably hear it spooling up in the background. It's pretty loud. And you can see that it is cranking up the temperatures on all of the threads here because it's a pretty extensive operation. So this is pretty cool. Uh, oh, it is finished. <laughs> let's, let's take a look at how long that took. That was fast. Wow. So you can see here, it only took 35 seconds as opposed to 2 minutes 26 seconds for the single threaded version. So that's almost a, what is that, like a 5x speed up. And that's just with 8 images and 10 transforms. If you have, you know, hundreds of images and thousands of transforms, then this is going to be a pretty significant saving of time for you. It's going to free up you to do other more important things in the long run. Uh, for me, when I was doing this for a project I was working on, it took about 15 hours to run on, I think, like 50 images, turning them into like 25,000 or something. And then when I did the multi-threading approach, oh, the reason I went and discovered the multi-threading approach is because I screwed up and realized I messed up all the images and had to do it over. So I said, I'm not spending 15 hours doing this again. I'll spend a few hours figuring out how to do the multi-threaded version and see how much of an improvement I get. And it was something like two hours down from 15 hours. So it was a 7x improvement from using the, uh, I think it was 16 threads. So it's not exactly a 16x speed up because you have some overhead, there's some input output bounds there, but it's still, you know, a 7x speed up almost an entire order of magnitude. So that's quite significant. And this will work with basically anything where you can map from a loop into a single iteration that you can then spread out amongst many different threads. So this could work on text images, uh, could probably even work with reinforcement learning if you split up the different uh, main loops into different threads and then just fed the GPU with all of that data. So the possibilities here are really endless. Um, please take this code, run with it, use it in all your projects. Uh, this is something it took me quite a while to find and figure out how to do to even ask the right questions. Uh, but it's enormously powerful and I hope it helps you in the future. If you found this video helpful, please leave a comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.